Okay, friends, now I wanna show you stinging nettle. And for these bad boys, I'm putting gloves on because it's gonna sting me. His, um, so, so it's in the name, stinging nettle. So let me show you what it looks like. It's already in blossom right now, but I have harvested this patch many, many times this season. And if you harvest it properly, just like basil, it will keep coming back and come back and come back and come back. So let me show you. So I'm gonna just cut one section and I will show you. All right, so look at this guy. Can you guys hear my little turkeys over there? Say hi guys. It's still babies running around. Okay, so um, stinging nettle has a stem that has little grooves on the side and it comes out like from each side like a V and in between there are new little growths growing. So if you cut right at that junction, see, just like that at that junction. Oh, hold on a second. I can't do it with one hand. So if you cut at that junction, right, then it will continue to grow a whole new plant. It will keep dividing up. But if you cut accidentally in the middle like this, it will not grow anymore. It will stop. Okay. So always cut at junction, just like basil. All right. So I want to harvest some of this stinging nettle and I'm going to um, preserve it because stinging nettle is a wonderful um, in many, many vitamins, including um, um, some minerals and including iron. So it's really, really good for those who have anemia, iron deficiency anemia. So, um, and also it's really great for fighting allergies. So my allergy sufferers, this is your ally. But look how interesting. So here is stinging nettle and right behind is not, but it looks just like it, but it's not stinging nettle at all. It's fake. So this is stinging nettle. This is not, not stinging nettle, stinging nettle. This is fake. And it's interesting how it's growing right around it, pretending to be, but it's not stinging nettle at all. I, don't, I need to look up the name of this guy, but it's just a weed. It's not a stinging nettle. So stinging nettle is good for, see, look, this is where I cut it in the earlier this season, in the middle, and see two new branches grew out of it. Because if you cut right where I always teach you guys, okay, right between the junction, right there, right there, right between the junction. So new leaves can create new growth and that's how you need to cut it. Uh, this is also can be used um, in treatment of as a hair rinse. It helps to rejuvenate hair growth. So this can be used as a hair rinse as well. And let me tell you, if this stings you, it definitely has a burn because each, t uh, each tooth, if you look closer, has this jagged little teeth on it. And that's what stings. In the early spring, this is one of the first plants that um, comes up from the ground and it can be edible, especially when it's a young plant. It can be put in soups, in stews, in salads. And in my culture, I remember my grandmother used to tell me that after a long cold Russian winter, there was always like that uh, nutri uh, nutrient deficiency happening in old Russian villages. So people would uh, wait for the stinging nettle to come up from the ground and they would eat that first because they needed nutrients so fast in the spring. All right, so I'm gonna be keep harvesting some of these guys. So 
So friends, if you like to go on hiking trips, you like to uh, harvest wild plants, it's always good to have um, a little, little guidebook with you to help you to identify plants properly, to know which ones are safe and which ones are not spe specific to the area where you are uh, going harvesting your plants. So I tend to know these plants because I grew up with them. But if I was going to and uh, harvest new plant that I'm not familiar with, I always like to have a reference book with me with pictures and description of the plant. Okay, so now we need to process the stinging nettle. It is best to harvest it when it's uh, flowering, just like now. And I'm gonna be taking, uh, breaking everything up, okay? And I'm gonna be putting that in a, in a, some sort of a, a plastic bag. It doesn't matter what bag it is. So quick little story about this guy, about the stinging nettle. Stinging nettle is high in iron, but in order for the iron to be absorbed by human body, we need vitamin C. So guess what? This is also high in vitamin C. So itself, stinging nettle um, helps the body to absorb, oh, it just stung me through the glove, to absorb the iron that comes from the soil through the roots into the plant. So it is good to be uh, used for allergies, like I mentioned to you, for anemias, uh, but also for rheumatism. Okay, so for, for, as an anti-inflammatory, it has a natural, very mild diuretic property. So I'm just breaking everything off, off the stalks just like this, but I'm not gonna throw away this lengthy stalks because I actually going to put them in a bucket with water to make fermented tea for my garden vegetables. It's gonna feed my vegetables. So I'm not gonna throw it away, I'm gonna actually save them because the vegetables also do need nutrients, just like the human body. So let me keep breaking this up and I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna show you how I will make fermented tea because when it's dried, we also only preserve about 15% of the nutrients that's in the plant. But when we are fermenting it first, breaking the cellular structure of all of the little uh, in the plant and releasing all of those properties, it allows us to conserve a whole lot more than just 15%. So if I just made tea using these fresh leaves right now, it basically would create broth. And broth is nice, but it will have no fragrance and it will have very little color to it. And if I dried them, it will make a very pale yellow kind of tea. But if I ferment it and make tea, it will make that dark, rich, very fragrant tea that is wonderful for us. So also, if you ever out and about and, um, and you have a nosebleed, just like yarrow, this can be used to help to stop the bleeding as well. So it has a lot of wonderful properties. So it's a diuretic, it's good for anemia, it's good for inflammation, and it's good to treat allergies. So let me, I'm almost finished here. So when I am done with all of these, I'm going to stick this bag in a freezer. That's right, in a freezer for a few hours or overnight. And if you're busy tomorrow and you can't finish this process, you know what? It's not gonna go bad in the freezer. Finish it some other time. But I already have some in the freezer today that I harvested yesterday and I will show you how to continue fermentation process. Okay, so this has been in the freezer for overnight, a little bit more than a night, probably like a day. And it comes out like a dark clump, just like this. So at this point, it's no longer stinging. So I can touch them with my bare hands. However, it's quite cold because it was frozen. So, so it's very brittle in my hands. And by breaking them and massaging them in my hands, and it's so cold, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Um, I am allowing, I'm stimulating all of the nutrients, the cells to be broken, all those little uh, cells in the leaf to be broken and allow to release all the nutrients out. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do with all of these leaves, just like this, and it's gonna take me a few minutes. 
Okay, so I've been massaging these uh, frozen leaves and my hands are absolutely frozen. Okay, at this point, I think they've broken up enough and I can actually put it uh, in a next step, which is a fermentation step. Now, uh, you can put this into a glass jar container or I'm just gonna return it back into a, a plastic bag because this fermentation is only gonna take a few hours, not long at all. I'm gonna put it in the bag, all of this. Okay, get in here, okay. Okay, so everything is nicely packed in this bag and I'm gonna keep it in the, in the container just in case anything leaks out. And then I'm gonna put an empty container on top to create weight. And I found this rock in my backyard, but you can use anything you want. I'm gonna let this sit outside uh, right here on my porch for the next five, six hours. And I'm gonna start uh, smelling a different aroma, that uh, sweet fermentation aroma. Not the sour, nasty, like something went bad, no, no, no. But that sweet, yeasty smell mixed with an earthiness of this plant. And then after that, I'm going to dehydrate it in my dehydrator. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can always dehydrate in some uh, um, well-ventilated place or even in the oven. It's just the oven uh, tends to run very high and unless you have the lowest setting and you keep the door ajar at all times and keep an eye on it because you don't want to burn this. It has to be a very delicate process. But I have a dehydrator gifted to me by my husband. He's so good to me. And I have a special setting just for herbs, which is a very low temperature. I think it's like 105, 110 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And that's how I'm going to dehydrate this. And usually for about five to six hours and it will be done. So by morning, it will be done. Okay, so this tea's been steeping under a towel for about 15-20 minutes now. And I have to say this is not a rag, even though it looks so discolored and so old and so antique. But this linen towel was my mama's old towel. And I saved it because, come on, it's great memories. I don't allow my family to use it in the kitchen anymore. It's only to cover teapots at this point. Alright, so I'm going to pour in this beautiful old-fashioned uh, glass because that's how we were served tea growing up when we were on a train so if you guys from come from the old former Soviet Union and you ever had to take a train ride overnight long voyage somewhere you guys know what I'm talking about because you were served tea every morning and every evening from these kind of glasses so I think I'm gonna pour a little bit of sweetener in it i like honey just to sweeten it a little bit but look at this color look how deep and dark this color is even though stinging nettle is a green grassy herb but because it was fermented it has this deep deep color and very nice aroma well here's to stinging nettle and homemade tea